This video is going to be a film study look at Odafe Owe and how he's performed for the Baltimore Ravens since returning in Week 7 against the Detroit Lions. Apparently, Owe thinks he's only scratching the surface, was his quote, uh, of his potential so far. Um, if that's so, if that's the case, then the NFL has a real problem on its hands because the Ravens' defense under Mike McDonald already was leading the league in sacks. I think they've been leading the league in sacks for the last three or four weeks. And then now that Owe appears to be getting to the quarterback every single game since his return in Week 7, like I said, it just adds to the overwhelming pressure that the Ravens can bring against the quarterback while maintaining that balance and that, that fundamental structure in coverage with all the athletes that we have. Four sacks in the last five games for Owe, against some serious competition, by the way. Not all of it is against backup tackles like we saw against the Cleveland Browns two weeks ago. The key for me, in my observation at least, is the incredible explosion and his get-off that Owe is showing on a consistent basis, every snap. No longer is he sometimes or often the, the slowest guy off the line of scrimmage, the last guy to engage the offensive lineman or the tackle. Sometimes tackles are taken, obviously, a deeper set, and so sometimes that's a, a difficult judge, but often we would get the all-22 view and you can see in a direct line of scrimmage that he's the last guy to get one yard depth in the backfield, and he's just too athletic, too strong, and too explosive for that. He's getting on top of people now. He's attacking. There's a clear difference in his stance and his get-off, and I'm actually going to show you three plays from 2022 to try to illustrate that for you. I think there's a lot of encouraging development from young players in their second or third year for the Ravens. Rashad Bateman, Brandon Stevens. Kyle Hamilton, second year, so he's a little different than those previous two. To me, Owe's ascent might be the one that hasn't gained our attention as much yet as it, as it should. I believe it could very soon, however. Like I said, four sacks in the last five weeks, two forced fumbles, six quarterback hits in that time, only 189 snaps in those five games because he's being used in a rotation with Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Van Noy. Everything he's doing right now looks like the same like like the same dominant athletic player that we saw in week 1 against the Texans. Now, he didn't have a sack in week 1 against the Texans, but everyone, if I recall correctly, was talking about how quick he looked, how he was getting off the ball, pursuing the quarterback, and I'll show you three plays from that that I think are in line with his play in recent weeks. He just looked totally different from what we saw in 2022 and 2021. And then week two, he was gone, injured against the Bengals, and we didn't see him for four weeks. We just didn't know during that month-long absence that when he came back, we were going to get the same guy and the tremendous impact of Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Van Noy, who had recently signed to that point. Those two really bridged that month-long gap when Owe was out with that injury. Now, the combination of all three of them together has really been overpowering. Check this out. In the last five games, of course, the Ravens are 4-1 and one during that time, with the lone loss being the disappointing home defeat to the Browns. Those three guys, Owe, Clowney, Van Noy, 11 sacks in the last five games, and they've combined for 16 on the season. I don't think that anyone um, expected those type of numbers from our outside linebacker position a little more than halfway through the year, but nonetheless, that's where we are. Let's get to the film a little bit long lead in. My apologies for that. Always wins in this stretch have been against some great players. At least two. Let's do it this way. Some great tackles in this stretch. Here he is framing up Taylor Decker and then push pulling Decker to basically manipulate him and leap in to grab Jarrett Goff and force a fumble in week seven. This is a shocking win. Taylor Decker, I watch him every week because I cover Lions stuff as well. He's in high-level tackle, always able to get into his chest here a little quicker than De Decker probably anticipated it, and then grab and pull to escape and almost kind of time warps to go grab Jarrett Goff. Shocking win, if you ask me. And that was his first game back against a really talented left tackle, in my opinion. Two weeks ago against the Browns, it was really almost a game-winning sack, if I recall correctly. Fourth quarter, he forces a fumble. And that's the thing I think that I really want to focus on a little bit is that he's a finisher. With the football in front of him, of course, he's going up against left tackle, so the quarterback's blindside, quote-unquote. We're not able to recover this fumble, unfortunately. He's a finisher. Think back to his rookie year, 2021. He had three forced fumbles that year. 
if he can get to the quarterback, which he is now, Chuck Smith and those guys have, in my opinion, he's, these are organic wins. I'll show you another one here in a moment. If you can get him to the quarterback, this is what he's going to do. He's going to get the ball out. Maybe not every single sack, but him and Ojabo, I think, both have that characteristic. Owe, I believe, has six or seven forced fumbles in his career uh, thus far. Feel free to go check me out on that. This one against the Seahawks, week nine. You've got three different moves here. You saw the one against Decker. You saw the move against the Browns, the speed rush to the outside, I should say. And now we've got a spin to the inside. Fifth possession against the Seahawks. All three of these moves are very distinct, and all three of them worked. I don't think that this spin is as downhill as some other spins that Owe has shown and other edge rushers. I'm not sure that his right elbow gets enough torque here that you want more, let me put it that way. But it does get him enough clearance to get a path to the quarterback. You'd like to see a little bit, a little bit more clearance there with his torque with the inside arm, the right arm in this case. Kind of slappy, I guess. But it is enough to get there. But the key for me is these are organic wins, these three. They're not scheme dependent or they're not created by the scheme. Not that there's anything wrong with those either. They all count. But some of the pick and stunts that we do, you're not always going to get the success out of them in every single iteration of them. You need organic wins. And this guy, to me, appears to be the guy who's getting the most organic wins out of our defense, along with Jadavion Clowney at times. Week 11, last week at home against Orlando Brown. Wins on the top side. Now, I think um, I think this is an attempted two-hand swat by him. The coverage helps here as well in that we have good coverage. The quarterback has to hold on to the football. And I don't think Owe's two-hand swat is perfectly timed up. You're going to get it in slow motion here. Also, credit to Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown retracted his left hand at exactly the, the, the precise time that he needed to. But Owe stayed with it. He got around the hoop, so to say, to get the sack from the top side. Organic win. Not, it's, it's not a win where he got any help. He didn't get a pick. He didn't get a screen or anything like that to help him stunt inside. I would say that initially, right now, if we were to pause and stop the play now, Orlando Brown has, quote, won if this is a drill, but Owe stays with it. Able to stay through contact, finish the play for his fourth sack in five games. Just a different get-off, a different burst, a different plan, if you will. And distinct moves that we didn't see as much of. In, we didn't see it consistently in 2021 and 2022. I'll prove it to you. Here's three plays from 2022. Two of them week five against the Bengals and then one from the wild card. This is week five. Now, personally, I did think he was dealing with an injury, especially early in 2022. There was not much said about it. But to me, it appeared as if he was still trying to recover from, I think, offseason shoulder surgery. And that had an impact and contributed to some of the stiffness that I think we saw and the rigidity in his moves, whereas now this year he's playing downhill, attacking, and you can you can actually see the combine numbers that he posted prior to us drafting him late in the first round. The level of athleticism is totally different. I feel like I probably should have showed or displayed some plays for you and then let you try to guess which season it's from. Yes, I get to cherry pick or, or choose the plays to, to illustrate for you guys, but I think you can see just from the two plays that I've showed you that there's a no comparison between the level of get-off, the commitment with his hands, the preparedness to use his hands, and then counter while on the move. Wild card game last year, this is actually a sack. Actually, I thought by the end of, by the end of 2022, I thought he had loosened up some more. I thought he was playing with, in a more dynamic fashion, some fluidity. And in this wild card game, look, he was far more impactful than just the sack you see right here. Against the Bengals that night, he was great on pursuit against Burrow, at least twice, closing speed down towards the sideline once. Also had a really exceptional pass drop where he got in a window, Burrow had to throw it high, and was brilliant against the run, in my opinion. But there's really no difference from, there's really a huge difference, I should say, from what we saw in 2022, even in the wild card game, versus what he came out and showed us week one against the Texans. And it's just continued since he came back from injury. Playing at defined angles, his block destruction is, is not just precise with the timing, 
but it's also appropriate for the side he's trying to win on. Now, this is a stunt to the inside. He's ripping, doesn't finish the play, doesn't get a sack, obviously. Ends up being a QB pressure, forces Goff to throw the football away. His, his block destruction is the thing that I think has leveled up the most. It's, it's the element of his game that's allowing him to use the athleticism on the way to the quarterback. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense, whether it's on organic rushes, whether it's on run plays, or whether it's on blitzes or stunts like you saw there. This is just what he's shown on film throughout 2023 when he's been on the field and been healthy. It started in week one, and it's just continued. Now, this isn't you know, an example of block destruction. This is just a closing speed. You don't have too many outside linebackers that they don't just – run down a quarterback like C.J. Stroud, who's an underrated athlete. But they close distance on him so quick that the quarterback has to get rid of the ball far sooner than he anticipated. His physicality in that game and continued since he's come back in Week 7, I think has been one of the most thing, the things that stands out the most. Ability to get off of blocks, to play through contact, and then finish plays. We are getting to see the exact reason why the Ravens drafted him late in round one. And hopefully we get to con- see a continued healthy version of Oway throughout the rest of this year. I think he puts our defense at a tipping point. Clowney, Van, Mo- Van Noy, Matabike, occasionally Pierce and others are going to generate sacks through either some of their own organic wins or the scheme, the way McD- Mike McDonald calls things. I feel like Odafe Oway is the three hitter of our defense in terms of sacks. Now, maybe you could say it's Matabike because Matabike leads the team with nine and a half. And I got no trouble with that either because I'm a huge fan of Justin Matabike and I wish we had re-signed him before 2022 or 2023. I thought the talent was there. Oway to me looks like the guy who can get the most organic wins against the highest level competition, the left tackle for other teams. And if and when we get in a playoff situation and we need to generate pressure organically, so far for me at least, in 2023, he is the guy, along with Clowney on the other side, who can do that. I think the film shows it. It it was out there for us to see in week one. It was just a little taste because he got injured early, I think, in week two against the Bengals. During the time when he was out, Van Noy and Clowney really carried our team, along with Matt Abike, from from a pass rush standpoint. And Oway just adds to the whole equation and makes it almost overwhelming for opposing offensive line groups at times to, to deal with for 60 minutes. You guys let me know, first of all, if you're as impressed with Oway's play from week 7 to week 11 in 2023, overall really, even though we, he missed so much time, and if you enjoyed the plays that I picked to try to display it. I felt like I had to show some plays from 2022 to illustrate the stark differences there are in so many elements to his game, the get-off, the hand moves, the precise counters and block destruction, that it seemed that those things seem to be second nature to him right now. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this film study look at Odafe Owe and how he can put this defense over the top, and he's currently doing that right now, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.